In the world of military aviation, few aircraft stir as much debate as Russia's Sukhoi Su-57. Heralded as the successor to the legendary Su-27 flanker and pitched as Russia's fifth generation stealth fighter, it's been more than a decade in development, yet fewer than two dozen have actually entered service. To some in the West, it's nothing more than a copy of the American F-22 Raptor. To others, it's a misunderstood, underestimated weapon with untapped potential. But which is it? A paper tiger inflated by propaganda? or a dangerous machine we'd be foolish to dismiss. Let's unpack the Su-57's history, technology, strengths, weaknesses, and future, and see if Russia's felon is the real deal. Origins, Russia's fifth generation gamble. Back in the 1980s, stealth was the buzzword in aerospace. The US pushed ahead with the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program, leading to the F-22 Raptor, the first stealth air superiority fighter. But stealth doesn't make a jet invisible. It simply reduces detection range, buying precious seconds before an enemy radar can lock on. The US built the F-22 for first strike dominance. The Russians, however, valued raw performance first and stealth second. This thinking birthed the MFI program in the 1990s, resulting in the MIT G 1.44 prototype, but the post-Soviet economic collapse buried that project. Not willing to quit, Sukhoi independently developed the S-37 Burkut, a forward-swept wing experimental jet that wowed airshow crowds and demonstrated advanced maneuverability. Its success helped Sukhoi win government approval in the early 2000s to lead a new effort, prospective airborne complex of frontline aviation. This project would become the T-50 prototype, later renamed the Su-57. First sightings and copycat claims. For years, the aircraft was cloaked in secrecy. Then, in 2010, the world got its first look as the T-50 took off on its maiden flight. Media outlets quickly cried, F-22 clone. In truth, similarities in wing layout are superficial. The Su-57's design is closer in spirit to the canceled American YF-23, with its canted tail fins doubling as control surfaces, large engine spacing for extra lift, and leading edge extensions for agility. However, several design choices raised eyebrows. The engine's compressor blades are partially visible from the front, a radar reflective weakness the earlier Su-47 demonstrator had avoided, and the large round thrust vectoring nozzles are far from stealth optimized. Stealth, not invisible, but stealthy enough. Western stealth fighters like the F-22 and F-35 boast incredibly low radar cross-sections in the range of 0.00001 to 0.00005 square meters in optimal conditions. Leaked Russian patent documents put the Su-57's radar cross-sections between 0.1 and 1 square meter, orders of magnitude larger. Independent simulations from aviation analysts back this up, estimating a median frontal radar cross-sections of 0.1 0.48 square meters without radar absorbent materials. That's far less stealthy than Western designs, but still small enough to complicate enemy targeting, especially against older radar systems. Where it falls short is consistency. Those exposed engine faces and nozzles likely spike radar returns from certain angles, making it easier for advanced radars to detect. The Russian view? It's stealthy enough for their doctrine, prioritizing agility, speed, and long-range missiles over all aspect invisibility. Engines. The Achilles heel. One of the Su-57's biggest headaches isn't stealth at all, it's propulsion. Ideally, a new airframe gets engines purpose-built for it. The Su-57 was supposed to use the powerful Izdelia 30AL-51 engines capable of supercruise sustained supersonic flight without afterburners at around Mach 1.5. But the Izdelia 30 remains in development. Production Su-57s instead use AL-41 F1 engines, an evolution of those in the Su-35 themselves based on the older AL-31 design. These engines still deliver impressive thrust and 3D thrust vectoring for exceptional dogfighting agility, but they likely can't supercruise at combat weight. In a close range fight, that agility and thrust to weight ratio above 1 to 1 make the Su-57 formidable. But in modern combat, where beyond visual range engagements dominate, engine limitations hurt its competitive edge. Drones. The loyal wingman plan. Where the Su-57 could leap ahead is through teaming with the S-70 Okotnik B stealth drone. Unlike the manned jet, the S-70's flying wing shape is optimized for low observability and can carry substantial weapon loads internally. In concept, the Su-57 would act as a command aircraft, using advanced data links to direct multiple S-70s into strike or reconnaissance roles. This loyal wingman setup could let Russia project force while keeping its manned fighters out of immediate danger. The technology for 
such coordination, dubbed Okotnik Data Link, is reportedly in development, but how close it is to combat readiness remains unclear. Financial and production constraints raise questions about whether both platforms can be fielded in meaningful numbers. Money problems and delays. The Su-57 story is also one of funding frustrations. India initially joined the project in 2007, hoping for a two-seat variant and domestic production rights. But delays in engine development, avionics, and radar systems led New Delhi to withdraw in 2018, saying it might buy completed jets later if Russia solved the issues. Russia's original goal of 200 airframes shrank to just 12, before rebounding to an order for 76 aircraft in 2019. Even so, as of today, only around a dozen are believed to be operational. The fighter has reportedly seen limited action in Syria, and possibly over Ukraine, with Russian sources claiming at least one air-to-air -air kill. Independent verification is, unsurprisingly, murky in the fog of wartime propaganda. Electronics and Weapons the Su-57's N036 Bielka Active Electronically Scanned Array Radar is distinctive in that it uses five separate arrays to maximize coverage and versatility. At the front is a large X-band main nose array for long-range detection and tracking, supported by two smaller X-band arrays on the fuselage sides that expand radar coverage to about 270 degrees. In addition, two L-band arrays embedded in the wing roots serve both electronic warfare roles and potential stealth aircraft detection. The fighter is also equipped with an infrared search and track sensor, allowing passive heat-based detection, a capability the F-22 currently lacks, though it may receive in future upgrades. Its sensor fusion works on a concept similar to the F-35's distributed aperture system, though it is believed to be less refined in integration and pilot interface. For armament, the Su-57 can carry the R-37M long-range missile, reportedly able to engage targets at distances of up to 200 kilometers offering a potential first strike advantage in some scenarios. Weapons can be housed internally to maintain stealth or mounted externally for heavier loads when low observability is less critical. However, one noticeable shortcoming is the absence of a fully integrated targeting pod for precision ground strikes, a feature the F-35 incorporates internally without compromising its stealth profile. How it stacks against US 5th gens. Would a Su-57 beat an F-22 or F-35 in a straight fight? Against the F-22, the American jet's stealth is vastly superior and its supercruise capability is proven. The Su-57's better IRST and missile range could help it get a shot in, but the Raptor's situational awareness and radar edge make it the favorite. Against the F-35, the Lightning II is less agile but excels in information warfare, stealth, and networking. In BVR combat, the F-35 would likely spot and engage first. In a rare close-range merge, the Su-57's agility might give it the upper hand. Ultimately, the biggest disadvantage for Russia isn't the jet's performance. It's the numbers. Even if all 76 ordered Su-57s are built, they'll face NATO's combined fleet of over 1,000 F-35s plus remaining F-22s. Potential versus reality. Russia envisions the Su-57M upgrade with Izdelia 30 engines, refined stealth features, improved avionics, and integrated drone control. If achieved, that could make it a far more balanced fifth generation fighter. However, war in Ukraine, sanctions, and industrial limits make rapid progress unlikely. In the meantime, China's J-20, already in large-scale production, arguably poses a more significant challenge to Western air power than the Su-57. Still, the Su-57 is far from irrelevant. It combines modern sensors, high maneuverability, long-range missiles, and enough stealth to complicate enemy planning. While it may not match US designs in low observability or networking, dismissing it outright would be a mistake. And that's our deep dive into the Su-57, Russia's bold but complicated leap into fifth generation air combat. If you enjoyed this breakdown, give it a thumbs up so more aviation fans can find it. Got thoughts on whether the Su-57 is underestimated or overhyped? Drop them in the comments. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for more military tech deep dives. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next mission.